Hello and welcome to another Touchdown Fracker podcast. I'm your host Lewis and as the Premier League kicked off last week and with just two weeks left of the transfer window, this week we will discuss whether the transfer window should be scrapped or any alterations should be made to it. Before we get into the thick of things, let's introduce this week's guest. First up is a guest who is voted as the third most popular on the Touchdown Fracas favourite guest poll. It's Mario. How you doing, mate? Not too bad, not too bad. Good. Six. Next up is Elijah, who hasn't been on um, the pod for a few weeks, but he's been doing some great articles for us, so uh, we thank him for that. How you doing, Elijah? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Fantastic. Aaron is our third guest, who is making his debut tonight. Um, he was on the Chaotic podcast a few week uh, last week it was, sorry. Um, but he'll be making his debut on tonight's podcast. How you doing, Aaron? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good. Uh, lo- uh, we have Io, who I haven't done an intro for because he just decided to turn up on the night. Um, so you all know Io. Boo. Hello, Io. Uh, and last but not least is the man who is top of the polls, is Leroy. How are you doing, guys? Fix! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leroy, how does it feel to be top of the polls? I mean, like, you're king of the world. Huh? Just, uh, just explain it the feeling. Good, it feels good, man. I mean, all these haters like Mario and that, but yeah, thanks guys for voting for me, innit? That's quite, quite a few. Got quite a few. Yeah, yeah, Quite a few women. I, I think I think Mariah's been been buying votes because he went from like three votes to thirty five votes overnight. <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to look at the website now. I can't even get on it. So. Oh yeah, you know, Mariah can't even get on it. I've never even looked at it before, but you were just getting on different computers in your fucking laptop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went to a library. Like, to library so, yeah, yeah, let me vote for myself seventy five times. Yeah, I saw a number. I said, "Nah, man, I need some girls." <laughs> Oh I'm gosh! I just do it myself, man. I think PSG just got someone sent off, by the way. Oi, did you see Wolfsburg's goal? Wait, yes. That's yeah. what I yeah. Anyway, well, let's get back. Let's get into the actual podcast itself. Um, Wait, edit this bit out, yeah. No, we'll keep it in. We'll keep it realistic. Bro, she edit me saying edit it out. <laughs> I should edit the part of editing you saying editing. Edit out, yeah. Okay, I'll edit that part and I'll edit this part as well. <laughs> Alright, so guys, um, uh, Wenger has previously called for the transfer window to be scrapped, um, mainly talking about the January transfer window. Um, he believes that it's, it's uh, not fair for clubs to have the opportunity to strengthen midway through the season, um, and it puts a financial strain on, on clubs lower down the league. I mean, um, Ayo, I know you're against it. You're the one who came up with the idea of... Um, uh, this this topic. I know you're you're against the ideas of transfer windows. Uh, what, could you explain why? Um, I just don't see a reason why um, people should be limited in like obviously um, players should be limited in moving and clubs be limited in moving moving players in and out. Like it's just a restriction of mobility. So I, I'm not too sure what the main reason is that FIFA have put in. I haven't researched it like that. I'm not gonna lie to you. Mm. And I just think yeah, and I think also. It will also it will also stop um like so obviously I'm sure certain transfer fees probably get driven up and all driven down because of proximity to to the window and things like that and also just like antics on players to think okay I've got I need to be out by this window let me start doing this I don't know I think it was, I think you cut a lot of the silly season I think it's kind of a, bit of a silly season transfer window period so I don't know, I, I, I don't really see why me as a club can't be able to, in the middle of, I don't know, December or the middle of November, okay, I want to go buy a new player and he's available and I can't get him. I, I don't see why. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, does anyone have an opinion uh, opposing IOs as to why the transfer... So maybe yeah. as... Yeah, go on. yeah, I do. I do, because, like, I think um, if you have the ability to buy anyone at any point... It's like, okay, everyone's going to get on to me about money and that. That's why Daniel's on the podcast because he's got on to me. But in terms of, like, the teams with unlimited money or the sugar daddy teams like C and Chelsea, like, that just gives them even more power to sort of control how the season's going with money, basically. And I think it's biased towards the top clubs because if you're Chelsea in that and you're not, you're very, very close to the title, and you could just go and buy, like, a £50 million player at will. Like, and I don't think you should be able to do that. I think you should... Have your team, and you should stick with your team. So you can't, 
you can't just bail yourself out of money. I think if you're mid-season and you're struggling, you want. It's, I, I think it's an easy way out. You're just bailing your way out with money. You're not actually using your tactics, using your nows, using your intelligence as like a team or whatever, or as a coach. So I just think it's basically a, it's a cop out. It's an easy way out. So, so, so but it's a it's a player acquisition part of part of part of being a manager. Yeah, but yeah, it is. It's for a window to do that. In that's, that's the whole thing. I agree with Leroy because basically you've got your chance to see how shrewd you are as a as a team or as a business to get your deals done. You shouldn't need a whole season to do it. I don't yeah. agree as well, man. T- two windows are fine. You've got your summer window, which is about what two, three months long, and you see the teams like Chelsea who've got their deals done early and move the players they wanted to move, and then you see the teams like unfortunately Manchester United who struggled. And you know, you shouldn't have an extra window to get it done in. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you guys a question, yeah? Why you said about okay, a B was about um, okay, a club like a super club like Chelsea or something could just, just randomly want to pick up a player for fifty million pounds if they're struggling. You're saying that as if just because there's a transfer window or not, why would that change a club's decision to sell? Because it's because of the transfer window or not? Like, no, I, I don't well, think well, why, why would it? Why would the clubs be forced? To, why would the clubs just sell? Because I don't think they will. I disagree with Leroy in that point. I don't think. Let's say we're in February, and a club has a player that everybody wants to um, buy. Let's say last season everyone was trying to buy. I don't know Diego Costa from Atletico Madrid. Do you really think they would have sold him? No. So the t- type of player Leroy is talking about, I don't think we'd see fifty million players moving nah, in the middle of the window. Uh, no, no, I disagree. No, no, in the middle of a season. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not saying it won't happen. But I'm saying, why is that a problem? It's, it's going to happen. It is a problem tra- because at the end of the day, like you've had your transfer window to organise your team and to be shrewd, whatever. So right, okay. So what you've planned did not come off. Like if you're Chelsea, it didn't come off, and it's now March. It's now March, and you say, ah. Oh, I want Diego Costa because that's going to fire me to the title last minute. And that's, again, for our money. Yeah? But the thing is, it, uh, you say they wouldn't sell him, right? But if they offered $120 million, which Chelsea and City could do, like, they would sell him for $120 million at that point. Can I speak on something quickly, yeah? About that Diego Costa thing is when we're talking about why, how everyone wanted him in March. If, like Leroy said, a team like Chelsea comes in and wants to buy him, even if they don't sell him, if Costa wants to go at that point, he's just going to disrupt him. He's going to pretty much ruin Athletic Madrid season. And it's just going to cause disruption between the whole squad. So I think it's just like it'll be another way. Even if like Chelsea were playing Atletico in the, in the Champions League and they did that, it's just like it's unnecessary. I think. Yeah, it, it, I mean, having two set windows where you can buy players gives stability. Like it gives just stability to everything. So it, like after January shut, everyone knows what they're doing. Everyone knows what they've got to work with, and it's stable until summer again. It's not all up in the air. It's just like Aaron said. I agree yeah. with that. I just don't think we see big players moving that often. Bath, like City and that have unlimited money, but they'll yeah. do what they have to do. Does Chelsea have so? money? Really? Huh? Chelsea don't I think they do, yeah. I don't think they yeah. have yeah. Any, I don't think they have their money like this anymore. They don't, they don't have a limited money. Uh, Abramovich is not a shake. Like, he's the businessman. He doesn't want to be making operating profits, operating, operating losses. It's not, it's not like City where um, Manchester City are kind of like an advertisement tool for for uh, for, for, for Abu Dhabi. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm giving an example in it because obviously they used to be like that, but now they're just trying to rein in. Now they've established. No, no, no. But they, they did that before because it was, it was basically like with Chelsea, it's kind of like a new business, and the new business is going to have a higher cost. You're still trying to catch, exactly. trying to catch up, so it was like an investment. Now, but now, yeah, that was now they're one of the biggest clubs in the world. Yeah. They're trying to be a lot more. They're trying to be a lot more shrewd. But it, was, it wasn't a specific club. It was just an example of a principle, like oh, just a principle which I'm using. Okay, yeah, like, again, speaking on that, you're really complaining about Man City, right? Because I think they're the only team that can just go out and do that. PSG. PSG or Monaco. No, Man City can't manage Madrid. 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 You, Madrid. Lot, Madrid. you lot are forgetting that about FFP, right? Yeah. FFP seems to be stopping Manchester, um, PSG in the first just in um, Angel Di Maria, yeah. by what we see. Like, with Real Madrid, it's different because they make the revenues. So they can spend, and even still, they, they I think apparently, if you want to read reports, they still have to maybe get rid of Angel Di Maria to be able to fund a uh, move for uh, Rodimo Faika. So, like, I think with FFP, um, I, I, don't, I don't think the super spending will, will continue for a long period of time. And also, we always talk about, our, um, oh, you could just buy this player, but you'll forget that these clubs are getting compensated for these players. And just yeah. because, and the transfer, and when I say it's open, this is even for. Teams that say teams are in relegation by old, they need some help. They can maybe go and get like a signing that can help them. So I think it can help everybody because at the end of the day, 
uh, transfers, player transfers, it's still, it's still a trade. You'll see yeah. so people see both <laughs> both parties benefit. Okay. That is, that's true, but it's a get out of jail free, free card, man. Like that's that's right, what I'm right. Well, why, why is it going to get out of jail free card? Because it's like, it's like saying, all right, for example, like, I, I have £50 in my poker game left over, and, like, I'm about to run out of my £50 because I've played rubbish, and then I'm just putting more money in. Now you have a buy-in, and then that's it, you're out. Like, that's it. Because you weren't smart enough, or you didn't use it smart enough. So, like, it it just makes money more important in football, and I don't think we need that any more than it is already. Uh, I am... Um, sorry, sorry to cut in, Leroy. Um, great points made. Um, I... If if I was to say to you that um, that not having uh, having a transfer window in like January, um, it puts a lot of financial risks towards uh, relegation fighting clubs. So, for example, this season what we may see is QPR struggling, and what will happen is is in order to bail themselves out, they may just go and splash say, 50, grand on, uh, 50 million on players, like we saw when they tried it with Christopher Samba and offered him, say, 150 grand a week. Doesn't that put unnecessary financial um, constraints underneath, uh, under under teams like um, QPR? Because when they go down, they have to face yeah, but, uh, but that, the consequences. Yeah, but I don't see why because that's their own fault. Like, they have... No, but because the option is there, don't... don't, don't the, no, that that does, I, doesn't the league I, have I, the... I, 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 doesn't I, have the I, I, league I, I, have I, I, duty I, I, of care I, I, to? I don't, think that, I don't think that's. I don't think that's a good enough excuse because you're, you um, QPR only have responsibility for QPR and their stakeholders, which will be the the board of directors, um, whoever has shares in the club. If they if they have limited shares or not, I'm not sure about QPR structure. The players, staff, and the fans. So they they have to do the best interest. They have, they have to operate in the best interest. So if that is which they did before, spend loads of money, then go down. Then, they have to, then that is what they have to deal with. Right. But that, that's not that's not fair. That as 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 a as a governing body, as a, as no no no. Listen, as a governing body, I think is uh, they have a duty of care. So I'm talking about the the FA, the Premier League. They have a duty of care to protect the fans. Yeah. Okay. So some of these okay, owners, so some of these owners. So so if so, what's the difference between QPR spending fifty million, fifty million in January, then get relegated? And QPR spent a fifty million in the summer transfer window and get relegated. But but you but you got to remember they pro- they probably already spent the the money in the summer as well. So this that's, is that's in addition to. Point, um, Lewis, they did that under the current regime. Like that's how they ended up messing themselves up. So are you telling me that you're against it or? Nah, but the thing is, at the end of the day, if you're gonna, if you're if you're a team that's a bad business, you're just a bad business. I'm nah, just nah, I'm just saying devil's advocate. Pressure, pressure, will, pressure will like. Uh, Pressure will make a shotgun approach at these things. So, like, at the end of the day, if you have no option there to do anything, fair enough. But the thing is, when these teams are actually in relegation under pressure, they will do dumbness to transfer. Exactly. So because see, cause they see it as the only option. They can't... You'll they... see more instances of dumb spending in that situation if they were relegation struggling and the window was open a couple of months before than you would with just a window in January. And yeah. Window in, and also, we would also see well, inflated that, prices. That, that, the January window makes it even worse because you have a restricted time a month basically to sort everything out where it's just like okay try and get these players in well when, if you had a window that was open the whole season through it's a bit more nuanced you can take your time with your decision exactly. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you're, you're speaking on that yeah so in terms of a financial point of view is it, it as Leroy said it is a shotgun approach teams will take the risk and that's not fair on the fans because then if these owners decide to then say, do you know what, I've had enough of this, we're going to get out. The fans are left in lumber with their team in League 1, League 2, and under in serious okay, financial so, difficulty. Okay, so, 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 wait a minute, so, so it's all well and good if they spend the money and succeed, but if... It, it I'm, not say, I, 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 I'm not saying that it's all well and good, I, you know my no, opinion. No, 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 but no, I'm saying, I'm, okay, I know you, but I'm saying, I'm talking from fans, but I think fans are very fickle of this, like, because they, they, will wish, they will wish for their clubs to have more money and be able to buy the best players they possibly can. But if, if, if it's got to a point where, you know, they spent money, it didn't work out, and they go down, oh, he's, he's taking money out of the fans' pocket. No, it, I, I don't see why your moral standpoint should be determined on the actual end result. Yeah, like, they didn't step up. Did buy the players in the first place to try and improve things on the pitch. And as we know all as football fans, quality players can come in and still not do well for some reason or another. The January window is awful, in my opinion. Teams go in there and they rush and they make decisions which they haven't thought through clearly just because they want to get somebody in just to appease fans. Yeah, yeah but that will happen right before the end of the season even more. 
Like, yeah, people are struggling too. No, 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 no. That's, that, but that's happening simply because it's open. I think people stayed true to their form. So Crystal Palace, oh, look, Crystal Palace, sorry. QPR messed up in January and they'd mess up regardless. And the team that do well would do well regardless. And that's just how it is, to be honest with you. Because I'm speaking on a squad point of view, yeah, like, I know you guys yeah. are speaking on like, sorry, club point of view, like saying, oh, this is bad for the fans. But if you look at it on like, a, like the players in your, in your club, if, if you're looking at a window that, that uh, is open until the season starts and there's games being played and there's a general window when there's games being played, imagine a window that's open the whole season and the amount of pressure that's going to put on players like thinking, well, if I don't perform, then I'm going to be... I'm gonna be like, you know, they're just gonna buy someone else to my position, and it's not always a good thing because it's not being, it's not being too, too careful with their play. Well, I, I, I don't buy that because in we're all grown up here. Everyone's got a profession. If you don't perform your profession, you get moved. That's that's how life works. Like, well, why should it be different for footballers? Like, okay, yeah, but then what happens if, if what happens if that guy, what happens if that player is just going through a bad patch of form? And nah, really like shotgun that. approach. Nah, if you never think about it, if you go and do a bad patch of form, and then he comes, he comes good at the end of the season because there's faith in him. Like football's you look at Ramsey, if that, I know, I know it's a competitive environment, but you have, you have to understand that pressure is not always a good thing because it starts making players make decisions that are too calm and too careful. Nah, that's life. That's life. That's life. That's life. Like, you can't. You that's actually life, can't avoid yeah. that. That's just, nah, so I, think, I think the constant, I think the constant fear of pressure of someone replacing you is not always a good thing. Nah, nah, they chose this man. Yeah, I don't agree with that at all. Football's competition. Then you can't do that. You don't deserve to be at the club. You're right. That's that's just how it is. You can't do it. No, then you you shouldn't be there. Yeah, clearly, obviously, you're not at that level. If you're if you're fearing for your job, do you think? Yeah. Uh, forget. Let me not even say like a a top player. But do you f- feel somebody like I don't know, Kieran Gibbs? Like, do you think he fears for his job? No, you go out there and you do it, man. Simple ass, man. I mean about that, but it's, it's not about like it's not like they're gonna get cut. I'm just saying, thinking about players who oh, people like are w- worrying, worrying for their position because they're gonna be on a bench. You never know. Like I think it's uh, about it's if you have a certain amount. I know it's life, yeah, no, understandable, understandable. But if you're looking, if you're looking at the point you're saying about how it's you get it right and you have your squad and you need to deal, you need to deal with that squad. Like you said again, it's, it, it, one, it's a cop out for the managers, and two, it just makes players. I don't think it's a cop out. I think I, it's I, a I, manager so. To, to it's run a massive cop-out. I think it's a cop-out. That's the thing. Massive cop-out. End of the day, like... Have your window to go on your own. Yeah, no, you, you, you. Like you said, you have your window to go and spend your money. And the thing is, after that and after it's closed, it's down to you, your coaching, and your tactics, and everything that's what football's about, which we don't want it just to be about money. It brings... It makes it... I mean, we've got a massive, massive imbalance between the teams that have money and the teams that don't anyway. And, like, we need to not make it as... As about money, so we need to take that away as much as possible and make it about the purest form, which is football coaching and like just being clever, being smart, being, being like shrewd. all that type of stuff, being shrewd. Yeah. See, but see, then see, if, see, you just, see, if you just if you just open the window money, the money, and they can just money, throw money at it, throw yeah, money at their the problems. The money thing in football is really it's really not stem for transfers. It's really stem from Sky. <laughs> that, that's just it's just it's just the money coming to the game from. Advertising sponsorship. Yeah, 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 but I'm just saying, like, I, I, I think transfers get too much of a stick blame. People, transfers, I know some people forget that. Okay, you say, oh, these big, these big clubs will come take our players. They still get compensated. It's, not, it's not about that. It's not about that. What I'm saying is, it, it, it's in March now. The window's closed, so you have to turn it around. How are you going to do it? If you have the option to spend money, you can just throw money at it. But my point is, you. But why? 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 why, 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 why yeah, but you. Yeah, but you talk like there's no negative from that. There's a negative because you're you're partake of money and it might not work. So yeah, no, it might not work. But what I'm saying is, you shouldn't have the option. It should be about the purest. Why not? No, no, no. Because then that's what I'm saying. We're trying to at least make it as level a playing field as possible. But we're making I, I, even I, I, a bigger gap between the houses and the fields. It should, it should be more about changing your tactics and changing your formation, changing yeah. the personnel on your team, and your squad. Your then. Brain. Yeah, you know I mean, because if that was the case, then anyone, I, I could just go on FIFA and be a manager. And I could be a manager in normal, like, it's not hard. Like, but you, you, you could have really low level managers coming up to Premier League and still doing what? Well, in but my opinion, can't. I think. Because we've seen that with Manchester United, where one manager. <laughs> yeah, Are you trying to say David Moyes is a FIFA manager? That's unfair, that is. No, he's not saying that, Lewis. <laughs> 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 it's not hard to say. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, seriously like, I, think, I think people are overestimating. I think obviously transfers and spending power makes a big difference, but like I think you lot tend to over exaggerate. Like, like, look, look at Manchester City. <laughs> like, Manchester City have done extremely well from where they were then, but still the grand scheme against other teams that still look. They got the team like Atletico Madrid, 
Okay. If, um, all right, so you say you've got City and Chelsea. That's the though. Say you've got, say you've got City and Chelsea. Exactly, there's teams at like Porto. Teams at like Porto. Teams at like Monaco have been to the Champions League, um, Champions League final. I'm, I'm okay, sure. yeah, but that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, like. say, you got, say you got a team like Chelsea and Man City situation last season. Chelsea then going by Fabregas and and Costa. Like, why, why, okay, okay, you're saying this. Why, why, would, you, why would Barcelona sell Fabregas then? No, no, because he, he was playing right. No, no, they 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 if, if they offer over the odds, if they offer the over the odds, I think, okay, this is a great deal, we'll just sell him now. Get rid of him. Like, I, I, and the thing is, that's not the point. Well, the point I'm illustrating is, a, again, it's another, like, um, what am I saying? It's a, it's a principle. Like, So if they manage to get, acquire Costa and Fabregas in March, they win the league. And that's just throwing money at it. That's, that's nonsense. Like, in March, what's the point? I agree. We, hey, did so, do a, we, did, uh, we did do a whole pod on how we rate managers. And to be honest, it's obviously a big deal. We, we banter about managers all the time. So just being able to throw money at your problems isn't good management, in my opinion. I like Leroy. I like well, well, like well, when, 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 has, when has thrown money like, in January ever worked? Chelsea did it with Fernando Torres. And, and, and yeah, but it's like, just bad decisions, but there, there are examples of it working. Uh, well, well, uh, well, where did Chelsea end up in the season? Okay, but there are examples Arsenal, of, of it Arsenal, working. It's not just Arsenal. about throwing money, but it's not, it's not just all... But it's not all about... But Ayo, it's not just about the fifty million pounds. Ayo, it's not just. Hold on, wait a minute. So was your target fourth that season? So I'm pretty sure it was. At that time, it was. We were eighth. Wait, wait, wait. Look at the record. Wait, wait, wait. We were mid table in January. Was it mid table? Yeah, we were mid table. 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 Yeah, no, no, we, 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 Wenger doesn't normally move in, in January unless he's got serious injury problems, as we saw from no, the, the world class no, acquisition no, of Kim Kallstrom. No, no, we were struggling as a team and he just had to do something. So, yeah, I just, and I just, he did I just think. It I was, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, when, yeah, when, yeah, when we signed Arsenal, you, back, you took back. back. I like it how it is, man. The only thing I would. We were talking before about maybe um, ended the transfer window before the season starts. Yeah, I, I'm a yeah. firm believer in that because I don't I think I don't think you should be able to go through. I don't believe that as well. Because, 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 um, what do you mean, what do you mean before, before pre-season or after pre-season? No, 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 uh, after pre-season, after pre-season, but before, um, before the first game of the season. So it should have finished, yeah, last Friday it should have finished. Um, I think, I think, where, where it is. Let Elijah speak. One sec, let Elijah go on. Um, personally, I think, um, that, um, like, the domestically there should be transfers where, basically, at the end of the season, straight after the last game of the season, where you could buy players domestically and then before the season starts, that's when you can stop buying players domestically and then the international tra- transfer just should, should, should just stay the same. So Cause into that, think, okay. Because personally, I don't, I don't think that, like, just, like, you've seen it with Long and Long and Southampton, while, like, the way they're moving now, like, Hull trying to buy roads and now there's going to be this big merry-go-round in the leagues and stuff like that. It's yeah. going to be loads of money splash. I think it's just, I think um, domestic transfer should end a uh, day before the season starts. I agree with that. And then, and nah, then, but, nah, but then don't, don't you think that that actually, like, okay, not being a bit, like, if you look at the FA, that hinders sort of English players because uh, the, the, the domestic transfers, that's all your English players are going to come in domestic transfers. So you want at least, so that makes it more, like, more likely to buy a foreign player. So if you're late in the transfer window, you don't get sorted, you can't buy an English player, but you can then buy a foreign player, but you want no, no, no. English players in the thing. No, no, because I'm saying that the English, the domestic transfer should just, just start the, the day after the season ends, which is how it is now, but yeah. it's just that. And so it's start the day after the season ends. With um, international transfers, it starts on like June, in, like in the middle of June. Oh, so that's okay. But, but, but Leroy, I mean, that, surely that would encourage managers to get their business done fast. I mean... Yeah, yeah. But, that, yeah but then I... That, and, I mean, and also... I, just, and, I don't want to see any discrepancy between being able to sign English players and being able to I mean, sign uh, international players. What, 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 what about the players, like, why should you, okay, you're in the occupation, yeah, because football, I don't know how much football is still an occupation, yes, it's a sport competitive, it's an occupation, so say, for example, I don't know, let me get, let me find out who's been unhappy, I don't know, who's been unhappy, like, for example, yeah, let me give you an example, let me give you a... okay, 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 say, say, team, yeah, or, I don't know, who's, who's been a bench warmer, oh, who's just been, that, okay, well, well, okay, let's say, like, okay, let's say Lamella or Welbeck, they're on the bench, yeah, and they really want to. They really just want to move. Like they're not happy whatsoever. But they're gonna have to wait until the end of the window. You just, but you're, but have... football's competitive. You just said that five minutes yeah, no, ago. You just, you just said that, innit? So... Yeah, football. Yeah, football. Yeah, no, no, but it's, 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 it's not, it's not man up. Yeah, you, 
you, this is a basic human right. I, I want to leave when I want to. Like, why should I? Stop? Why should you? You're under contract. You got a contract. You got. You've signed a contract. Don't so sign the contract then. It's yeah, a no, legal no. agreement to say that you're going to be training and you're going to be there, and it's yeah. your work. Yeah, no, but yes, but also your work can release you. So if the club wants to sell you, and you want to. No, but the club can't sell you then. If they yeah. release them, they're free agents. I, I, I thought free agents can sign, can sign at any time. Is it? Yeah, is they, can, they can, they can. No, no, it's up into like March or something, isn't it? Yeah. Say, say, say something like Lamella, yeah? You say he's at like Spurs, yeah? Imagine doesn't like him. He's like Spurs. He's not like the country, blah, blah, blah. And then, I don't know, there's maybe Dortmund. They want to grab him as well. Spurs, uh, uh, Spurs want to sell him. Dortmund want to buy him. Lamella wants to move. But he's going to have to wait until... Um, to, to summer to move. Josh, that's a fact of life, bro. That's, that's what happens, man. That's, that's what happens you, in everything. You take a gamble yeah. on a player, you pay 30 million for him, if it don't work out, it happens. It's life, man, not like you said. Yeah, you can't, like, yeah. you can't get, have everything your way like that. Like. And I mean, he's getting away from the same. But there's a prima donna enough, man, like crying about contracts. Like, you so sign a contract. What, so, what, so, what, so what firms, firms, firms could not end a contract or move an asset when they want to. It has to be a certain time. Why? Because that's how. That's how football works. That's how the market works. They, they were fine with signing the contract when they were getting 100k a week plus, but now they're not fine with it because they want to move. Like, it's so it don't work like that. What do you mean? So, because somebody gets money, they should now be happy by force. Yeah, That's but, so, all right. No, it's not about that, but I'm saying they were fine, they were fine with, like, they, they read the contract, they got an agent read the contract. I, I, yeah, I think... They were fine with it then, so why are they not fine with it now? I don't get it. I think, I think what you would see... That's, that, well, don't be dumb, bro. Like, I, situation change. I, so, I know situation change, I know situation change, but that's the whole point of... Uh, I, 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 sorry. Let me restore. I oh, sorry. What I would think, uh, what I would um, think you would see in terms of like unhappy players is if you say, for example, they completely got rid of the January window and the window closed um, the day of the season. What you'd see is clubs would be much smarter with um, who their squads are, yeah, because they won't want to carry an unhappy player. They don't want to pay a player who's unhappy for the whole of the season. So I think you would see that squad sizes. All it takes is one action. And that could switch somebody's mood about the whole environment. It's one action, man. Okay, yeah, but that's that's football. That's football. But what I'm saying is, is instead of stockpiling players, hey, yeah. Listen, in, you have, no, Lewis, no, let's be serious. Oh my god, equalised. Oh, he missed. Anyway, no. okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. This guy's over gone. Now, listen, okay. Say you're at work, yeah, and then there's a there's a situation at work, yeah, that you didn't like, yeah. If you didn't like it, you could leave. No? Yeah, you, you have you to work see I just think time. sometimes you're just going to have to stick it out, man. That's one of the things you have to do. Yeah, some, some, some places, some companies... Footballers are so spoiled. You say, I'm leaving tomorrow, and I'm leaving. You work three months notice, and then you leave. You can resign indefinitely. Yeah, you can resign indefinitely, but like, if they want you to work your notice, you work your notice. As, as, and especially, especially if, it, if it's like a, like a gross misconduct or something, because you can get shipped at the same time. Yeah, but then if it's like something like like a gross misconduct, like a Suarez or something, then you get back. They, they, they could get, no, for what happened to Suarez, bro? He, he got suspended for eight games, came back and started banging in goals, bro. And, he <laughs> me, and, and now he's allowed to play. That's just bollocks, bro. Yeah, like, but what I'm saying is, like, at the end of the day, like, people can't just leave instantly. If you you, you work your notice, I'm and, I'm and then you leave. Yeah, but, what, two weeks on month notice? So yeah, that, but like, I mean, the thing is, it's definitely it's definitely refilled. It's definitely what? refilled. Like you, you, you can leave in the next window, which is six months away, or four months away, or three months away, or two months away, and that's it. Like it's different in every field. Yeah, some things exactly. you have to work one week, two weeks, some with four weeks. Right, some like some you have to give like two months, three months. That's a, that's a corner of a job where you're getting two hundred k a month, man. I yeah, think you think you're yeah. right, man. Yeah, I don't feel sorry for them in that. Uh, imagine how peed off you'd be if you did preseason. You 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 based all your preparations around your one key player, yeah. So, and then your chairman decides to sell that player on deadline day. How pissed off as a manager would you be? Human. Absolutely human. No, no, no. But that's not football. It is, it is, it is, it is. No, I, I, I don't. But I, I just don't agree with that principle in football. That it, it, it takes away the skill side of things because. You've done oh, you, so much about money for football. Like, so, what do you talk like takes with the skill side of things? Like no, I don't. I think I think for signing the right player and still integrate into a team is also still a skill. No, of course it is. But I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying that a manager. You know how long Roman Jr. Brass for? You know how long Roman Jr. Brass for? Roman Jr. Brass the way this place for how long? Chelsea yeah. have come sixth, third, third, and how much money have they spent? Uh, no, I'm not just talking about. I'm not just talking about the va- the, the amount of money p- uh, people spend. I'm no, just no, no, they're still spending. They're, they're still spending, no matter they're spending or not. Like, I'm just saying that I I, I just don't think it allows a manager to do his job to the best of his ability. Is it, is the manager? Do you think the manager's 
manager's choice to have to, to sign a player or not? I'm talking about yeah, the selling no, club. I just, I, I, how are you about selling? It's not, it's not true. No, no, I completely agree with Lewis, though. Like, I think in, term, no, in terms of once the season starts, I think the window should be shut. You should yeah. have one, one window in between. And that, and I, I only think that window, like, the purpose of it is emergency. So, say if I've got seven injured players, I need to be able to, to sort of... Um, what to kind of legal stipulations could you put into that, though, Leroy? Because then you'd, see, you'd hear people so making up injuries and stuff yeah, like that. Of course, you get people messing with it, man. Definitely. Yeah, no, 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 but that's what I'm saying. Like, I, like the window should be a free window like it is now. But the, the, only, the reason it's there is mainly emergencies. Like, it should be a free window. You can buy whatever you want. You can buy if you're if you're messing about. But that's the reason I think that you can't get rid of it. Because, like, if a team has, like, nine injuries or something... So, so what, you still think people um, should be able to buy players? Pardon? Yeah, yeah, you should be able to buy, you should be able to buy anyone. So then how does... Uh, how, no, but so, that's a cop-out. That is also but that's still a cop-out, cop-out then, Leroy. It is a cop-out. I think I think maybe no, then it's a necessary evil. I, I think that it's maybe you should only be able to sign loan players or something. No, but the thing is, if you're Manchester United, you are not gonna get free loan players of the quality that you need to compete. You're not gonna go and get Di Maria on loan, Kadira on loan, you're not gonna get like top level players. But you but you probably won't get them in a the January transfer anyway, because they'll be cup tied um, with no, Champions but League. Because, like, no, because they'll be cup tied in a Champions Chelsea. League. You think you think Chelsea get a Matic on loan? No, 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 I don't yeah, think they will. They but, but I don't think they, I don't think they will, and I don't think they should. No, nah, but that's that's a, that's a mess because like if you've got four, four, five, six, seven, eight players injured or whatever, you should be able to like, you, you shouldn't really like that's an emergency situation. But would you like, buy Matic you because of an emergency? You wouldn't buy Matic because of an emergency. You would buy Matic yeah, sure. because he's a world class player. Okay, for example, if if we for if, if Arsenal in January. And uh, I'll take a broken leg in January. Is that six months? We go and buy a top DM because we'll keep him anyway. Like we buy. Okay, but that's because of one injury. Yeah. You're talking about in terms of eight injuries. Okay, if we've got um, like our whole spine injured, if we had. Um, but then, yeah, but then, but then Wenger proved yeah. this season that he did, he wouldn't do it. He would just go and sign King Kalshan on loan. <laughs> that's what <Wenger>, I'm <laughs> <laughs> He's a special dude, but. Um. Go on, Elijah. Um, in France, they have this thing called the Joker transfer window, where basically, in between September and December, you can sign one player within the the domestic system. You can sign one one player from any club, and that, that's it. I think that's good. So, so is that still current in France? Yeah, I think so. Uh, that's a nice idea. A wild card, like you have a wild card. Sign yeah, yeah. You can use once at any point. Pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, mm. That's a good idea. Hmm. <coughs> That's what so, I mean, I think that'll be good. I think I think we all agree that this, like the the alternatives that we're suggesting, or or what we may want, or what we may like, are probably never going to happen because the money that Sky make from transfer windows alone, or the money even yeah. media outlets make from transfer windows and transfer deadline day, is almost becoming like the NFL draft and the NBA draft system. That deadline day is that big now that I know you would still get deadline day if it was like before the season or whatnot, whatnot. but the way that it's built up now in terms of transfer windows where you're getting two of them, I just don't think it would be in the league's interest or in the media company's interest to, to scrap it. So whilst we can talk about it, I don't think anything will, will ever change. I think we'll be stuck with this system. I think they need to Make, you know it's a 25 man squad now I think they'd need to bolster it to about 30 to make it no make no it, to make it fairer make it small. if if there was no small. transfer window the whole year smaller round. why smaller they need to no they need, they need to make the squad smaller because what if there was no transfer players. window Elijah huh if there was no, if there was transfer, no transfer window if there was no transfer window yeah then yeah that's what I'm talking about not yeah. in general I'm talking about if there was no transfer window just to kind of compensate because like Nero said like if you're like Arsenal there's going to be a time when like five, six first teamers are all out at the same time. So you need to boost the size of the squad a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Apparently, Di Maria's been confirmed. Really? For what club? Manchester United? That's what they're saying on uh, Master Radio. Okay. Oh, wow. Why is it always Master Radio and not Master like, website or anything? I don't... It's the Real Madrid-based news station. Mm. S- 75 million euros, apparently. Oh Yo. my goodness! Wow. 
I'm not happy. Oh, man. Okay. 75 million euros. Let's not pretend you men 95 million. actually care about money, man. Um, no, you oh, got to do my God. Do. How did he miss that? I don't know. Wolfsburg is shit. You know, They've got to do what they got to do, man. Like, I rate that. Yeah. Go out and do it. Just go out and do it. Uh, no, nah, that's... That's nah, 60 nah. Nah, they're screwed, innit? Like, you need to, they need to pull themselves out of it. Like, this I, is a joke, would do that sometimes. I wish I could do that sometimes, man. I wish we'd go the extra mile sometimes and just see, like, you know what, screw it. Like, let's just go and, let's just go and ball out. Let's just go and pay for a player and who's going to complete our team and let's, let's go and win the league. That's, that's the thing with paying, this thing that's paying 75 that's million for Dean Maria, yeah, yeah is, I, I had this thing about, like, paying big money for players who are not scoring me goals and winning me games consistently. I think, like, the Dean Maria won in the Champions League final, bruv. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, like, no, no, it's fair enough, that's sick, yeah. Dean Maria's, he's a baller and I love the guy, but. What I'm saying is just like you, you if someone spends like 75 million on like or euros on, on Suarez, I get it, man, because the guy's banging goals consistently. Dim Rio will influence the game like kind of a bit passively sometimes. Nah, he's still good. Well, I mean, nah, like, nah, his, his, quality, his, quality, his quality will give the team. Nah, nah, he is a match winner, but he, I'm saying he, he's a match winner, but that, 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 I think I that think, for me I is that when, it's, when it comes to strikers, for reason, there's a reason for me why strikers get paid the most money and the most of money course. gets paid for strikers. Of course. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what I'm thinking. Like, and I, 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 Fair enough, my ad, and just go an extra mile, and I respect that, because sometimes you need to just slap it down and be like, listen, man, take it, and we need the player, but it's just big, big money, I'm just thinking, should go for the guys who are banging in goals. Yeah, we've got strikers. Right? We've got strikers, but yeah. they, they, no, they, no, 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 no. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying for mine, I just mean, like, in general, like, the way I see that nah, big money nah. going for players or for strikers. So, who, so, like, so, who, so, who, so who have you seen that recently that you think is too much money? Because, I mean, 30, 40 million for a top midfielder, I haven't got a problem with that. 50 million for David Luiz is a joke. At the end of the day, like yours, as what, what it's what someone's worth to you, isn't it? Because if I yeah. was Arsenal, yeah, if I was Arsenal and I had a banging front line, okay, I don't, but if I had a banging front line, banging midfield, and all that was needed to complete my team is one amazing centre back, there's one amazing centre back available, and I have to pay 15 million for him, and that's worth completing my team, and I'm going to win everything. I'll pay 15 million for that centre back. What is centre, but, but what like is, is there a lot of a difference between an amazing centre back and a good centre back in your opinion? Nah, but it doesn't matter because that is what I need to complete my team. So that's what it's worth to me. That fifty million is worth to me to win the league. So understand. But what I'm saying with strikers, strikers, David great strikers who score a lot of goals are few and far between. You know what I mean? That's not something I'm David, David Luiz is worth fifty million to one team and twenty million to another team. Simple as. Yeah, yeah. understandable. Yeah, that's un- understandable. But the, the the thing I'm saying about that is I know it's a bit off topic, but I'm saying. A striker for me, there's there's a lot of like, there's a huge gulf in quality between a good striker and a great striker, whereas there's, there's a smaller gulf in quality between a great centre back and a good centre back. In my opinion, that's why you pay the most money for a forward compared to pay the most money for a centre back. In my opinion, it is the hardest thing to it's hard thing to do in football, but to score goals, yeah, fair, fine. But my point is, end of the day, you can't say to someone else that what this is worth to you because at the end of the day everyone has a different worth for everything everyone has a different value to everything yeah. so, and that is uh, why it's, it's worth, it's that is why we're going to sign you know, players a lot to us because uh, do you know what when yeah. you're, I, I'm happy when because he don't sign scrubs like that's like, yeah. okay, uh, when he's gambling obviously fair enough but if he doesn't rate a player he's not going to sign a flavour of the month no, he doesn't sign the flavour of the month he doesn't sign, he, he don't sign the flavour of the month guys that when everyone was pressing him to sign like Thierry and Ashley Williams S- Sam but then we've brought We've got scrubs like Jeru Snogo, so I can't really shut this in. We've got Snogo on a free, mate. Should be happy. Snogo on a free, scrubs. <laughs> Should be yeah, happy, mate. I paid pay to not have him, to be honest. Robin. Wow. Oh, Robin. Yeah, I can't believe Robin just missed oh, that. His touch to bring it down was fantastic, though. Oh. Give me the BT Sport Pass, though. I want to watch it. Just invest, oh, man. Sorry. Subscription. That's All right, um, guys, does anyone have any other points they want to add um, before we move yeah. away from the transfer window? To, yeah, I just want to quickly say about um, just an example of why the transfer window is um, a, a bad thing like, if you're during the season. is because um, there was a thing with uh, Pardew last season. You know when Arsenal won a bid for Kabai? He bid like, what, 12 million or something like that. Uh, and Kabai, so, so happily, he, he declared himself unfit for the first game of the season, I think it was. Uh, it's, it's just disruptive to, to the team's plans, and I think it's just it's unfair on on uh, on managers, in my opinion. Of course, but if the window was open, do you think he would have actually? If the window was open the whole season, do you think he would have actually done that? Yeah. Would, yeah. You like, think so? Would have? Would he? No would he? declare himself unfit? Yeah. No, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. He's not going anywhere. Hundred percent. But if players throw strops, man, like that's what they do. Look at Snyder. He went Snyderlin, in January. If Snyder didn't, like, if this was the middle of the season, Shannon would have thrown a strop anyway, like, who tweeted all that nonsense and said, I'm not playing and all this. Players throw strops, they're prima donnas, like, they're like, they're like lighties, man. 
They're not intelligent. Like we need to understand that they're, they're not smart people. Like, <laughs> no, that's, that's harsh. Not, that is harsh. Yeah, they're not. Bro. They're, they're I not mean, like, we got they're, they're, we got Joey they're, Barton. They're not, they're, they're not. They're not the upper elite of you know intelligence and professions compared to other people. And they, they deal with situations poorly. <laughs> they deal with situations poorly, bro. And that's what that's, they act like children. Like goodbye. Act like a child. You know what I mean? You got Schneider. He's acting a bit like a child. He's acting better. He's still acting like a child going on like going on Twitter and like tweeting and stuff. It's just. You don't need to do that. That's, that's, that's why I think they'll, they'll do it regardless of whether or not it's at the start of the season, the middle of the season, the end of the season. That's why we can't really compare football to other jobs because in another job, if you want to leave, you can leave. While in football, if you want to leave and your employer doesn't want you to go, you kind of have to stay there. So, you know. Like, I felt really sorry for Alan Pardew last season. Why? He had. Why? He's a prick. Bro. No, no, no. Right, fine, he might be a prick. No, no, no. Because they lost Kabai. They lost Kabai. And so, and it's like every no, but you you can't just replace a player like Kabai halfway through the season. It's and and it's not exactly it wasn't exactly Alan Pardew's choice to sell. I know you, whether you whether you like Alan Pardew or not, you've got to feel some kind of sympathy towards him that like he's lost his best player in January when they may have had a chance to to qualify for the Europa League, and they lost him for for no di- no no decision of his own, and you got you got to feel some sort of sympathy towards him in my opinion. Uh, about, uh, about a telly to Liverpool is uh, 12.8 million. What? It's uh, 12.8 million. Yeah, no way. What, for it's, it's 60 million euros. Jeez. That's definitely worth the risk. Are yeah. you joking? 12.8 Why has no one else gone for him, though? Why has no one else gone for him? And we signed Giroud for 12 million. Uh, so they're not going to free, bruh. No. Uh, there's, a, there's something wrong there, man. That is banter. Why is no one else come from? Why why is like even someone like Juventus? Where else is it gonna go, Lewis? I don't I don't know. Like who else is gonna go in from Chelsea on? Well why not Chelsea? Because they've got Diego Costa. No, no, they they don't get along. So they that's the first one. Who who don't what? Man United. Man United have got strikers. Next one. City, he's already been at City, ain't gonna they ain't gonna go. Arsenal, we don't want him. Next. Right, cool. Well, go? so you're telling me uh, no one out there wants a striker uh, like Balotelli for twelve million pound. No. But he, uh, but he might, come but on, he might want to come to England. Come he's on. Been before. He, he likes, he likes, the, he likes the Premier League, you know. You remember, it has to be a club that can pay his wages as well. Exactly, because he remember he's asking for mad wages. Can Liverpool pay his wages? Yeah, they can. Liverpool yeah. pay dumb wages. They pay Suarez two hundred twenty bags, bruv. Yeah, yeah, but they only paid him two hundred twenty bags for six week for six months. Yeah, yeah I know, but, but they paid him two hundred twenty bags. Like, yeah, I know, but... They, they still have, have those wages free, so... They have a lot of money, man. Like, they, 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 Liverpool pay better than us in terms of top end. Hmm. When they're spending, like, 20, 20 million and Stuart Down and 35 million Andy Carroll, you know they've got money to burn. Like, it's not, it's not a thing to them. Uh, Andy Carroll's 130 bags a week, bruv, when he signed back in the day. Yeah. They play... They play I wonder, I wonder why Wenger hasn't gone for him. Why did you say Mourinho didn't go for Balotelli? Because, because they don't, they don't like him. He can't control him, bruv. Like, he even said, like, Alright, well then, but if if Mourinho can't control him, then... No, I but it might be a different style of management that could work for him. Because, like, uh, that's what I'm saying, Wenger is a complete opposite style of... Yeah, no, the disciplinarian thing don't work, like, so why why not try um, the other approach? I wonder, but why do, why do you think Wenger doesn't fancy him? Because he's a maverick, and, and he's just a maverick, innit? But so was Anelka, so I don't... I don't no, but Anelka wasn't know, when, when he bought him, though. Like, Anelka was a bit... Balotelli will go and shoot people and stuff like that. Like it's it's not even it's not even like a little thing, man. It's crazy. But then to be fair, he went for Suarez. So boy. Yeah. yeah. That's that. But Suarez Suarez is quality. Just outweighs the fact that he's crazy. Yeah. And he might not. And Lewis, he might just not rate him that highly. Yeah. No. No. That's true. I, listen. I I I agree with that. I ju- I'm just trying to wonder. I definitely don't think that Balotelli suits the way Arsenal play. I I, I, little, to be I don't even. I think the way he slows down yeah. play is crazy. I don't even think that Brendan rates him as high as. As other strikers, because obviously he is like what fifth, sixth choice, as far as yeah, we know. I definitely, I definitely think it's the last option for him. The issue with him yeah, to get a big name, I think, is more he can disrupt the whole team, literally by himself. So why why do AC Milan want to get rid of him? Are they in financial difficulty or? Yeah, yeah. That and his attitude as well, man. His attitude stinks, man. Who who Milan got now? Like I think Shawari's back from injury, isn't he? So. Yeah. Last season he was quite he was injured for a while, so maybe that's I thought, but I thought Balotelli was getting on fine at Milan. I didn't think he was having any problems at Milan. 
Or is that incorrect? Yeah, racism, isn't it? Italy is just a racist country when it comes to football. Like, I think he yeah. just didn't like that. Mm, nah, he already knew that. He, he had problems when he went back there, that towards uh-huh. the last season. His first season went well. Remember, he scored quite a lot of goals for them. All penalties, all penalties, I might add. Well, they were goals. Uh, he's got a banger, man. Yeah, well, yeah he's got one banger and then ten penalties. Hey, listen, mate, goals are goals, mate. No, goals they're not goals. goals are goals. No, no goals are not goals. goals. I don't say that because Giroud scores quite a few goals, man. <laughs> Giroud don't even take penalties, mate. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Because he just misses them against commentary. But th- that's the thing with the whole goal ratio thing, because if Giroud w- took penalties and he'd scored four or five penalties a season, that would take yeah. his goal ratio up to what yeah. you guys were saying, oh, one in two is decent. But then yeah. that... No, no, no. Do you know what? But the issue with Giroud oh. is not his pr- how prolific he is because he's a decent... No, I'm just saying in terms of the goal ratio of, thing. In you know, terms of like... how good he is, he's going to let you down in so many matches. He's clearly oh, not man. good enough. Uh, guys, uh, Atletico Madrid just went one and up, man. Oh, wow. Jeez, already. So I've got a question from um, Team to Die For. And he asks, do you think Raheem Sterling is capable of scoring 20-plus goals this season? Yeah. Yeah, in all cups, yeah? Yeah, Yeah, because he's playing up front, so, yeah. His, his, his knack for a goal is improving a lot. He's getting in the right positions, even even he saw against Atlanta, he's, he's doing very well. I think. He's fast, he's intelligent, and he's playing in uh, two up front in the diamond, so yeah, he can. Okay, I've got a question from at Real Lloyd. Um, who are the three... Because I think I asked this question earlier on the pod. I think that's why I was asking. Who are the three players with the most ability in the world? I think you answered me already, Aaron, but Leroy yeah. is this. I shall I sh- I sh- just go for one quickly. Yeah, go on. Uh, I think uh, Messi, number one, clear. Uh, Iniesta, number two. And I'm going to say Modric, man. That guy, I love that guy. I think he's, I think he's ridiculous. Okay. What, what's the question? Three players in the world with the most... We're just talking ability. Oh, gosh. Van Persie, Messi and... Okay. Um, probably Iniesta. Are we talking natural ability or just ab- having ability? It doesn't matter if it's acquired or natural. Ability as in how they play, yeah. So right, they... okay, so then mine are Messi, Ronaldo, Iniesta. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, gosh. I only chose... And Ronaldo's got ability. Just yeah, Ronaldo's got, yeah, Ronaldo's yeah, got crazy ability. I didn't know. It's hard. It's better what definition. Say just, say I, 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 I kind of wanted to just give a, a different out, answer, Ronaldo. to be honest. Yeah, can we take Messi and Ronaldo out of it? Okay. You can if you want. <laughs> yeah, sure. Alright, Iniesta, Modric, Fabregas. Fabregas? I saw Fabregas in a lot of my lists, you know. He is so sick. Mm. He's, got so much, he's got so much ability. Top five. It's just ridiculous. Like, the, the, the stuff he does, he does it at, he, he does it, and he makes it look so easy. But it's, it's, other players kind of a dream, bro, doing the stuff he does, man. Top five, I don't know, man. What about Neymar? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Neymar, Neymar's good. Neymar's, Neymar's techie. Neymar, Neymar, if you take... Neymar, Van Persie, Iniesta. Van Persie is, is a good one, because Van Persie is just ridiculous. Yeah, Van Persie is nuts, man. Do you think Ibra 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 yeah. Some of the stuff Ibra Oh, Ibra, Ibra, Ibra as well, for good. Who's got more ability, Van Persie or Ibra? I think Van Persie. Van Persie. Van Persie. Are we talking oh. just natural or, aqu- or acquired? Natural, natural ability. I think... Ibra. I think I think Ibrahimovic does stuff that you can't like. You just you just like how, but why do you even think of that? But so but does Van Persie. Persie. So does Van nah, Persie. I know, I know, I know, I know. But Ibrahim, you see that goal he's got in training? Like what? What the hell, bro? Mm. That's yeah, just, nah, I'm how does your Ibrahimovic. How does your mind work that quick? I don't get how his mind works that quickly. Like to, to even think about doing that, it's, it's just it's mad. I'm going Ibrahimovic for natural ability, boy. Because I think after yeah, you know what? I'm going to change my answer to Ibrahimovic probably because I just think it's ridiculous. I, I think Van Persie does have a lot of natural ability, but a lot of it he worked at it too. But Van Persie's just immaculate technically, and yeah, like, yeah. he's got a lot of technical ability. I saw, I saw some video of um, Dennis Bergkamp in training the other day, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, um, like still, like, like the other day in oh, present. Oh, he was playing the other day? Yeah, he was in training the other day doing some coaching for Ajax. And the technique never leaves you, man. The technique on, uh, on this volley that he did, yeah. Oh, See, the, um, you know, Elijah was manager for Swansea, and they were asking, like, they were asking a player, they would think of him. Yeah, yeah. He like, he's still, he's like, they were like, he's still the best player. Even, he's still the best player in training, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, it, it, like, if you look at, like, Burkamp, yeah, for me, like, I know I was young when he was, like, at his prime, but even watching, like, former games of him and stuff, like, he is probably the most technically gifted player in the Premier League, in my opinion, ever. Like, he's just ridiculous. Some of the stuff he used to do with the ball, that's just, I, I can't imagine anyone else doing that. It's ridiculous. Mm. Yeah, it's probably a sh- I, I, I still think that Van Persie is, is kind of pips him, but... Oh, no, you know what, Lewis? Oh. 
No, nah, Lewis, I, I, I agree with Lewis because I've said this a lot and I've got a lot of stick for it. But I think Van Persie is so underrated in actually what he is in the whole football in terms. I think he's one of the... Ah, oh, he's a genius of our yeah, generation he is. and he's he is. underrated for that. He is. He is un- shame. It's a shame for him that he's been injured for so long because if he was fit consistently, he'd probably yeah. be... It's a shame for him that he's a cunt. Um, it would be no debate. It'd be um, really no, no, no. I, I, just say that. It'd be... No, no, no. Henry, like Henry, is still going to be clear up there. Like, but Van Persie, if he was consistently performing, yeah, I think he would have got close to Shearer's Shearer's um goal record. The guy scored six. The guy scored seventy nine goals in two seasons. Like, it's my thing, but but the thing is that Henry's all round though better than everyone. Just just saying that. Guys, do we have um? Yeah, I agree, Leroy. Um, do we have any yeah, okay. other questions? <laughs> Van Persie anyway. Van Persie anyway got his pace, bro. He only got pace, and he just. Oh. Guys, do we have any more questions before we wrap things up and we can get back to uh, watching um? What what's the game? The Madrid derby. Yeah. After the Bayern game. If you had to sign one player for your club right now, who would you sign? Oh Christ. Happy Mod. Oh, what if they're fit? Available. No, if you could sign one player for your club. Right what now. if if they if if say if they're injured? If you could sign one player for your club right now, who would you sign? Yeah, Messi, but I'm Messi, saying. Bro, Messi. <laughs> Messi, bro. That's it, Messi. Nah, nah, come on, be, 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 No, but I'm saying Messi, in their current state. I'll ask if it was realistic or if it... Nah, do you know what? Um, mine would probably be... Mine's Martinez. Falcao. Okay, interesting. Who, who, who would you take? Um, Aaron. Well, you could say Messi, but I wanted to be somebody who's a bit more like... Mm, okay. Yeah, but Messi could come Arsenal if he wanted to. <laughs> no, he would. <laughs> Mine's Falcao and Marco Rouse. Interesting. Yeah, I'd say Modric. Modric. Transform mm. my midfield. But, um, yeah, that's what I'd get. He won, yeah? So I'd just get Messi. Hmm. Okay. Um. I've got one last question. Then before we wrap it up. Um. Uh. Actually. Yeah. Um. Well, this one's more aimed at. Well, but Murray, you could answer it as well. Um. Thanks. Do you, <laughs> Do you see Joel Campbell getting a chance at Arsenal? No, I don't. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying that? <laughs> I'm joking. Um, <laughs> That's because he's got, like, the stamina of a 10-year-old. Yeah, basically, exactly, man. Come on, man. But, yeah, he does, that's true. But um, yeah, I feel like Wenger doesn't trust him. And players Wenger doesn't, don't trust, they don't get a fair shot. Like, they'll get, like, a couple of minutes here, a couple of minutes there, and they'll do one thing bad, and that's it. They're not, they're not going back in for, like, 10 games. And then they'll do it again, and they're not going back in for, like, 15 games. So I, I don't see him getting a fair crack. Because he's, 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 he's lost that trust with Podolski, hasn't he? He's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, like, Podolski... Never say Podolski's got a fair whack, like, since... But you know you can get from him, though, man, to be honest. No, but he hasn't got a fair shot, though. Like, fair yes, so, but I, I don't blame Wenger, Wenger, man. I was watching Podolski at um, Cologne as well, and I can see why, man. He but that's what I'm saying. If, if Wenger has it in his head, he doesn't trust a player. Like, he doesn't play in that one. So I don't see Joe, Car- Joe Campbell getting a fair shot. So, so what do you reckon I, I then? I think he'll get shot because of the fact his attitude... Like, from what I can see, his attitude is right. Like, he, he wants to succeed and he wants to be at Arsenal. So, I think... If if Wenger, I, I, I agree with Leroy. Like, I don't think he trusts him right now because I think if he did, he would have played maybe even a little bit in the first two games. But uh, I think I think he, I think he'll do all right. I think okay. he'll be all right. Okay, I've got another one. Um, who is your prediction for young player and player of the year? This Cesc Fabregas player of the year. Yeah. Callum Chambers. I agree with Fabregas. He's gonna just we're gonna be watching the Cesc Fabregas show every week, man. But um, yeah. No, we won't because I'm gonna turn it off. <laughs> Before that Burnley match, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna at the Arsenal account. Um, are you tuning into the Fabregas show tonight? But I completely forgot to. Then he tore it up, so now I don't want to do it anymore because it's like, oh yeah, you, you're only doing it because. You, know, you beg, you beg. <laughs> um, I, I'm probably gonna go for Sterling. I'm ready, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. I think it's pretty. Uh, I think it's pretty set. Pretty, pretty set in stone. It's gonna be Sterling, to be honest. Uh, I, I think yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I agree. With, I agree with you guys, man. Probably got started. Can't even. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, so no go for player of the year for me. Oh please. 
<laughs> in that bonding idiot. In Italy, they do like. Oh, worst... so what's that? Yeah, yeah. So well, there's an award in Europe, like worst player in Europe. I think that's what. Um, yeah, yeah. So no. He, no. So getting, he like, will never get uh, such an award. Yeah, Adriano got it, mate. So boy, never ever. Really but, do you know? That's do you know when Senogo scored that goal against the Benfica the first one, where Ramsey did all the work and then he went on and started dancing, Ramsey was just like, you're a prick, bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in his face, bro. Ramsey didn't even celebrate with him, he was like, you're a prick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but Alan, like, I'm on to you. Like, you, you don't answer my WhatsApp, isn't it? So like, I'm on to you. Like, you don't answer my WhatsApp when I'm angry. You said Senogo's better than Jury, bro. Like, you said Senogo's better than Jury for us. I was hacked. I was hacked. You, I was like, hacked. What, what, what were you on? What were you smoking? Uh, what, basically, what, no, no. Here, here, was my, here was my thinking behind it, yeah? And I think even you would agree with this. No, but, no, 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 no. Let's, 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 listen, listen, listen. One, at one point, I, I hate Giroud so much, bro, and I uh, still do, kind of. Two, <laughs> I think Sonogo is a lot better against the teams where we need to stretch the game and we need to bully, we need to bully defenders. And I think he'll, I think he should play against Evan, in my opinion, because I think he'll do that. I agree, I, I agree, Aaron. Maybe against Man City, that Giroud would have played against Man City. But when it comes to playing teams who are going to sit, like Palace did, Giroud is essential because he has he has the ability, because I, I, he's a good footballer, in my opinion. I just don't think he's a good he's not, he's not a bad footballer at all. He's not bad. Yeah, I think he's a good footballer. I've always said it. I've always said he's got good tech. He's got, he's got good things about him. Um, I think against teams like Palace, where you can get the little, like, fire it into his feet, let, get, let him play it back to someone, like, play a wall pass to someone, he can do it. But, you know, it's different. I, I think that Giroud's a better footballer, but when it comes to certain amount of games, it's no good. But then I don't think, as a football club of Arsenal stature, we should have a striker who can't play against Arsenal. can't play football. Yeah. Not even that, like, not even Snogan not playing football. I forget that. I'm talking about Giroud. Having the thing where we're like, oh, but maybe playing against different teams. We should have. We're Arsenal football club, bro. Our strikers should bang against any and every team. Giroud actually has a good technical base. It just under pressure, it just evaporates. I don't know where. Yeah, and that's and that's and that's the problem I have with Jordan Henderson as well. That's why I don't rate Jordan Henderson. I think he's got a decent, like he's got a decent ability, but when it comes to like under pressure. (laughs) (laughs) If you look at Jordan Henderson, no, no, no. If you look at Jordan Henderson in training, bro. If you watch his training videos, because I always see them, because I like. Don't care. I'm getting Liverpool, yeah. Because because Liverpool. He's he's always winning these kick-off competitions. I'm feeling sick. I'm feeling sick, bro. Yeah, but he. But he don't, but he don't do it under pressure, bro. Uh, I don't, you know, no, Leroy, you know, I don't, you know, I don't rate Jordan Henderson. You know, I don't rate him. You know, I've never rated him. But when it comes to under, it's because I don't rate players who are not good under pressure, bro. And I think that Roger is so essential in football, especially at the top level. All right, guys, we'll that's leave it there. I mean, so much, bro. The guy, bro, he's, he's ridiculous. Sure. We'll leave it there, guys. Um, <clears throat> finally, we've got a pod that's less than an hour long. That is, wow. I think we all deserve a pat on the back for that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to um, give a shout out to Daniel, who goes by the name of Swagador. Um, happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Daniel! Mate. Um, happy birthday, bruh. Yeah, happy birthday, mate! Um, we'll see you back on the pod hopefully next week. Um, hopefully you're wasted my birthday now. tomorrow, actually. Funny enough, Mariah, it's your birthday uh, tomorrow. Birthday tomorrow oh birthday. wow, God! We're doing so many shout outs for birthdays. It's amazing. Okay, guys, vote, vote for me, yeah. yeah. Give, <laughs> give give Mariah a birthday vote you're so we can get up there. Man, yeah, well, you, you, you've been on the pod for 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 two occasions now, so I can add you on there, so you can start voting I'm get, for yourself. I'm get all that Asian beanies that follow me that's yeah, but <laughs> you need to get Asian Twitter to, to start voting for you. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, yeah, so we'll see you next week. Um, yeah, so see you later. Take care. Take care, man.